Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to share some wonderful news that took place today. Early this morning in New York time, India's Chandrayaan-3 mission successfully landed its Vikram lander module near the south pole of the moon. And what is significant about this is that India has reached the south pole of the moon where no country in the world could reach to date with the dedication and talent of its scientists. My second point, this achievement not only marks India's presence on the moon, but also symbolizes the aspirations of 1.4 billion Indians. Beyond that, it's a historic moment for humanity as we venture into uncharted territory near the moon's south pole. As India's Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, has emphasized, the success belongs to all of us and holds promise for future scientific achievements that will benefit humanity as a whole. And let me quote the Prime Minister of India himself on this. India's successful moon mission is not India's alone. This is a year in which the world is witnessing India's G20 presidency. Our approach of one earth, one family, one future is resonating across the globe. This human-centric approach that we represent has been welcomed universally. Our moon mission is also based on the same human-centric approach. Therefore, this success belongs to all of humanity, and it will help moon missions by other countries in the future. The Prime Minister went on to say that, I am confident that all countries in the world, including those from the global south, are capable of achieving such feats. We can all aspire for the moon and beyond. Furthermore, my next point, in a few days, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, India will host the G20 summit in New Delhi, to be specific, 8 and 9 September. Our approach to global challenges has been rooted in the idea of one earth, one family, one future. This same principle guides our collaboration within the United Nations and underscores our perspective on the remarkable scientific achievement of today's moon landing. And allow me to quote the Prime Minister of India again when he says that this moment is unforgettable, unprecedented. It is the moment of the clarion call of Vikasit Bharat, a victory call for India. This is a moment of crossing the ocean of difficulties and walking on the Chandrapath of victory. This is a moment of the capability of the 140 crore heartbeats and the confidence of the new energy of India. This is a moment of invoking the rising fortune of India. And finally, the Prime Minister of India went on to say, in the first light of Amrit Kal, this is the Amrit Varsha of success. My uh, next point uh, is about the Indian Space Research Organization. Now, this is truly a world-class space organization. Many of you would have heard about it. Headquartered in Bangalore, this organization is involved in science, engineering, and technology to harvest the benefit of outer space for India and mankind. Uh, ISRO has launched many rockets and satellites, as you would all be knowing, but I will add that ISRO's own lunar and interplanetary missions, including the latest Chandrayaan-3, along with other scientific projects, encourage and promote science education, apart from providing valuable data to the scientific community, which in turn enriches science. And I think I should point out one more very interesting fact to all of you. Guess what? a very significant number of scientists who worked on India's moon mission, Chandrayaan-3, were women. Very much in sync with India's model of women-led growth and development, and also syncing beautifully with SDG 5, which is all about gender equity. So, in conclusion, what I will say, ladies and gentlemen, is that by aiming for the moon, India has not only reached it, but also set our sights on the limitless possibilities that lie ahead. As the saying goes, to infinity and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. 
on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association. Thank you for coming to talk to us about this significant event. Are you planning to seek um, any kind of a resolution from the General Assembly, perhaps, or from anybody else to uh, mark this significant milestone in India's um, history? Well, thank you very much for that question and for your warm con congratulations. And thank you very much for putting that thought in our mind. I will come back to you on this. <laughs> Thank you, Ambassador. Congratulations on the uh, moon mission. It's a huge moment for India for the space program. How would you characterize the significance of what was achieved today, not just for India's space program, but collaboration going forward on the space frontier? Thank you. Thank you so much, Yoshita. I think, uh, uh, make no mistake, this is a very great day. And I think what really stands out um, is that India is the first country to land on the south pole of the moon, where many others have not succeeded so far. But most significantly is the larger message that the Prime Minister has emphasized upon, which is that India has an inbuilt humanity in everything that she does. The concept of one earth, one family, one future, and as you say, Yoshita, he has also said that this success belongs to all humanity. This success is dedicated to all humanity. And that India's success should spur other countries from the global south to do likewise. That's all the time we have. We have to take up for the next. Uh, one last question, and then okay. I shall leave. Thank you. Thank you, and then I'll... My name is Abdul Hamid Sayam from the Arabic Daily Al Quds Al Arabi. I have, in fact, three quest interconnected questions. The first, what are your views about expansion of BRICS as a founding member of BRICS? There are 23 applications uh, waiting to be approved. That's one. Second, do you see that this great success of India will enhance the possibility of India to become a permanent member of the Security Council? And the last, and I hope you will be patient with me with this question, would we one day see that the issue of Kashmir, that open wound of the Kashmiri people, had been settled uh, in a way that the people of Kashmir uh, exercise their right to self-determination? Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, what I will say is that this is not the moment for these questions. Today is a day of celebration, and we are focusing on India's success, and indeed, the success of the whole of humanity, as our Prime Minister has put it. But these questions are very valid. And I will be very happy to answer these questions uh, on a different occasion, uh, and it will be my pleasure to call you across to the Indian mission. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.